Hey everyone, welcome to Magic the Gathering for Advanced Players. I got a quick fun one for you today. I'm Matt Sperling. We're going to do a deep dive into some advanced play as we always do. But I've got a low stakes, fun kind of version of it. So Eric Virgo, pictured here, he just hiked the Pacific Crest Trail, took a break from Magic, coming back, trying to get back into playing shape. So he's volunteered his video for me to critique in the hopes that you know he'll improve a little bit, but that I'll have some fun with it too. He's got a, as good a reason as anybody to be out of shape with Magic. You see he's hiking 10, 15, 20 miles a day for 150 days. So, you know, I'd be rusty too. He hasn't shaken that rust off yet, so it's a fun game to watch. He'll make some mistakes. I'm going to watch the game and assume whatever, was, whatever happened earlier in the game, we are where we are. How do we make the best play? Talk through some of the decisions he made. Um, he's rocking the old Cyrus Storm deck. Um... I changed one card and called it Spurling Storm, but this is he's back to the, the Cyrus version. So, you know, this is what you've got. It's gonna we'll go back to the list in a moment, but he's gonna play game one of this league, firing it up. He wins the die roll. Let's dive in. On we won the die roll. Um, we decided to keep this hand, which looking back is probably a mistake. We Okay, so the first right off the bat he keeps Is this a mistake? Well, there's no action, so a classic no action combo storm hand. You got the mana, I mean, really ideal mana in terms of Lotus Academy, three free artifacts, duress, so some disruption, perfect mana, and a cantrip. Yeah, he regards this as a mistake. I'm not so sure. Um, if we turn to our friend, the hypergeometric calculator, as we always do here on this particular channel, let's see if I can pop that back out. Um, get this thing in frame. Okay. So, I said this is going to be a quick video. We'll see. 53 cards left in the deck. If you look at the list, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Some of these are cantrips. So they're not full outs. You're going to whiff some of the time. You draw a pre but not all that often. So let's call it 17. 53 card 17. The top card is going to be action 32% of the time. That's not that bad. I mean, it's 32%. You're very likely to just win on the spot. 54% in the top two. That sounds pretty good. With a duress. And in the top three, I mean, we might have some time. We get the rest. Maybe we can use the rest to slow down the opponent. We get to see the opponent's hand with the probe first. 70% in the top three. And if we got to play a little bit of a longer game, kind of the prey, we'll get the 80%. Kind of feels like a keep to me, all, all things considered. So I would keep this hand, and Eric does. We have a redraw with the taxing probe, but this hand doesn't have any action otherwise. You know, it has the disruption with the rest, but I think this is probably um, not a keepable hand. Uh, maybe we'll get paid off here with a, a Tinker or a Dark Petition or something like that. Okay, so it looks like we're playing against Delver. Um, interesting to note here that they have no counter magic in their hand. And we draw a brick. Okay. So I think we're just going to play uh, Underground C uh, Pass. I think it's likely that they lead off with Delver. We can. All right, so opponent's got Ponder, Delver, Cruise, Dig, Shattering Spree. No need to duress yet. I agree with that. No need to deploy artifacts against Shattering Spree, so, so far so good. For a better time. And obviously we're not going to play artifacts into the Shattering Spree. As expected, we have a Delver. I agree with no Chain of Vapor end step. I think it's a tempo play that you might want to make some, some small percentage of the time where you kind of have your game plan mapped out. We don't have action yet. They haven't flipped it yet. We don't know what's going on. And the play's not going anywhere if we draw bricks. So I'm fine holding Chain Vapor here for sure. No problem with that. Preordain. It's a pretty good draw. So I have the option. I think we have to cast Preordain this turn. We can either Preordain off of Underground Sea, which means we can't duress if we end up wanting to go, go off. Or we can play mm -hmm. Mox and Talarian Academy and, and Preordain mm -hmm. off that. Um, we know they don't have any counter magic in hand. It's relatively unlikely that they drew any. Well... Eric says you can play Ruby Academy and, and preordain off the Academy. You can also play all your artifacts and preordain off of all your artifacts and just say, look, if this preordain completely whiffs and Shattering Storm kills me, I've got Chain of Vapor. Um, and so I'll use Chain of Vapor. You know, 
it's interesting. If you play all the artifacts in the academy, you might have to even you probably have to dress first because now it looks like they should force preordain, or at least think about it. So that that's, a, that's even an interesting play. I mean, if if we're the games that we whiff off of preordain, you know, we still have some, we still have some legs in this game, but against ponder, cruise, shattering spree. Yeah, I don't know. So th- this this is a really close call. I think. I think I would, given that some of our outs are triple black, the Citadel, the Necro, but in the DT in, in, in a certain sense, um, it's a little bit rough to use the Lotus to, to duress and you have to lead Lotus, the Lotus could get forced. So I think I would, act, the opponent doesn't have a counter, we may not even need to use duress. So in this spot, I think I would duress off the Underground Sea if I didn't see a if I see a counter take it, if I don't see a counter take the spree, and then unload my artifacts, play the academy, and then use the academy to preordain. So that's how I'd play this. I think that we can take the spree and go from there. If they have a counter, okay, we're locked into preordain. I think that's enough upside. Uh, I don't think that the other decks play days, so I'm just gonna lead off with the, the preordain here and see what we find. Good Hollywood from the opponent. All right, defense grid and polluted delta. I don't think we need either of these. We're going to be able to protect our, or be able to get the clearance to go off through duress. Uh, so we don't need the defense grid, and we're pretty flush on mana here. All right, so Necropotence. That's a pretty strong draw. Okay. Um, what does Necro mean for us? Necro means that we're probably going to play out our whole hand and then draw 10 ish cards. Um, now that we know that we're going to play this, we, we have the option of playing around days. Well, actually, this does not play around days because they can daze the Lotus. Yeah, so you should just lead, lead LED first to play around days, but whatever. Um, that would have involved playing, playing the Machu first, but I, I don't think that's really relevant here. Hmm. Okay, uh, I noticed another misstep here. So... If this Necropotence get countered, we're going to want to hold our artifacts in our hand, so I probably shouldn't have played this Mox Ruby here. Um, <laughs> you know, just because it's a potential storm count for next turn. Okay, so now that Necro has resolved, I think we can run out all of our artifact mana, and let's assume we're going to get smacked for three off a of Lightning Bolt. Um, that's six damage. That would leave us at 12 life, which means we can probably safely draw 11 cards, unless they drew a Bolt this turn and flip a Bolt next turn. Um, I think it's most likely that our opponent is going to use Shattering Spree next turn, uh, especially because it's going to choke us on mana with the Tlorian Academy. I don't know, maybe, maybe we shouldn't have played the artifacts here, but the additional cards off Necropotent seem more relevant. Um, so I'm going to leave us at 8 life. Um, that's going to allow us to get smacked for 6 and still fetch. So Eric is not, he's not even considering Chain of Vapor on Delver. He's counting the Delver's 3 damage. I... I just think like you need a chain of vapor here. You, you, when you're you want to unload your hand, and you're about to necro for ten or more. You certainly don't want to hold on to cards. Um, I mean, you can chain of vapor end step, with, but I think you should not be thinking like, oh, well, Delver's going to be some extra damage. Opponent sacks the land, bounces what doesn't matter. Necro. I mean, who cares? So you, you just necro in response, and then you get the cards, and you're, you're not longer, and you can just stay at seven if you, and so you don't lose the double bolt. That's fine. Um, had you to rest different, but fine, play on double bolt. But I don't think Delver should stay on the board. Um, and Chain of Vapor is a card you're likely to have to discard anyways. So unless you want to use it for Shattering Spree, but I would be fine just balancing that Delver. And if my opponent's turn is Shattering Spree, and I just necro for eleven. I think I feel pretty com- pretty comfortable there. Turn. <laughs> okay, so. We have ten. Okay, so the discard step. Goes in hand, and we also. Okay, so in the end step, if you hold priority, I mean, you have the ability to use cards like Mystical Tutor, Brainstorm, Mystical Tutor, Ancestral Recall. I mean, Chain of Vapor, like. You have two mana here with the academy. Like I think you want you want to use it. So where we are right now, I would I would look and see. Okay, I've got a bunch of cards I want. Let me chain a vapor the delver. Let me mystical tutor for something like, you know, your yog will or your you already have the tendrils. So you know, dark petition or yog will or whatever. Um, 
I think that's just you're going to get to keep more cards if we're using our mana and our end steps. So that's a pretty big misstep. So we're already like we're going to be discarding cards here that are valuable. Also have quite a bit of card draw, which we probably don't need. We do have Mystical Tutor plus card draw, which means we'll be able to uh, put any card in our... We'll be able to Demonic Tutor for anything. We have just a Chain of Paper here. It's very likely that we don't need it. We have four more discards to go. Um, I'll take a second land here, as these artifacts are probably going to get destroyed. I think the Cabal Ritual is the worst mana source in our hand, but we might need it. Um, we can drop the Brainstorm. Drop the Ponder. We want the Mox Sapphire. I think we want the Lotus Petal as well, uh, just to make Nana with this. Actually, we can we can ditch this Underground Sea because we have two black sources already, but we might get Wastelanded, and I think we can probably function off one. It means we won't get to Duress before we go off. Um, and just a coaching note on kind of the methodology here. You want to, I think, pick seven cards, and you can drag in, in real life or here. You can kind of craft your seven on the left, and then discard the rest, because if you change your mind, I don't think it lets you pick up the card out of the graveyard, or if it does, it's even harder to see. I would just craft a hand of seven, discard the rest, and that hand of seven is going to tell you what's my plan, how much mana do I have, where are my bottlenecks. That can be hard to see when I'm staring at half cards I'm going to get rid of, half cards I don't, or I go one by one, and then, oops, I, actually that land would be valuable. So I, I don't love the methodology. And I also think that, like, you know, a card like Underground Sea might be more valuable than a card like Cabal Ritual. Cabal Ritual has kind of a, a price of entry that doesn't look like it's going to pay off with a bunch of having a bunch of more skulls. Just the Dark Ritual might be enough, and Underground might help. Should we get Wastelanded here or something? Um, Underground's you know good protection against something like a weird like a Null Rod that comes out, and we're thinking, oh crap, how where are my ball next now? So I'd probably keep that Underground. And and, and like I said, I mean there's. One of the problems with discarding as you go, you kind of lose sight of where your bottlenecks are or what your seven's going to look and like. And what are we Mystical Tutor for? Mm. Probably Mystical Tutor for Yogwell with his hand. Um, and then, actually, it might just be, it might be Mock Sapphire here. Or, yeah, I think it's Mock Sapphire. Okay, well, he's on the yeah, like you can't discard Sapphire here because a Wasteland's gonna knock you so low enough on blue that your your plan of Mystical Tutor Ancestral, I mean, you know, things bad things could happen here. Um, even something backdoor, like, you know, if this card last card drawn was Wasteland and then it's like you know, a Ruby or a Lotus could be Shattering Spree plus Wasteland. I mean there's there's just reasons why again, Cabal Ritual, I'm just not sure that that's pulling its weight in this particular hand because we're not going to need a bunch of black mana until it's time to Yagmas will or do whatever we're going to do. So our game plan next turn is to lead off with Duress. Um, we'll cast some Rituals. Then we'll Mystical Tutor for Yog will recall it into our hand, cast Yog will If we still have the LED in play, then we'll get to... Uh, get some additional mana that way. Oh, we can also Yogg will in response cast Cabal Ritual and then crack the LED to make sure that we have Threshold. No, you can't because Necro makes you exile the card you discard. It's a weird line of text on Necro, but it's not gonna. You uh, can't use lines that down as a Threshold enabler with Necro. Um, and then just cast a bunch of spells and tendrils down. <laughs> okay, I think we're gonna see Volcanic Island chapter history yeah. here. No, Time Walk. Okay. I guess they flip Force of Will. Flip Force of Will. Very, fairly disastrous sequence. Time walk, Force of Will on top. Yep, there's the Shattering Spree. Okay, so opponent tapped out. I mean, I think letting the academy go to zero without using our blue instance i think it's poor um put look put the opponent to the test right um we can mystical tutor opponents likely that that resolve if we ancestral the opponent decides to force that we don't have to ancestral right away so that's one thing we can mystical that's fairly likely to resolve untap duress ancestral um 
off to the races, Lotus, you know, Lotus Petal Ancestral off the Academy, Sack Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, you know, our Ancestral will get us into the will. So, should be good to go here, but losing that mana is pretty rough. Now, we got to, it's just mana we don't have anymore. Mystical Tutor, it's like, it doesn't get better with age. It's just going to get worse. <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> how do we win this game? Coach's note, how do I win this game? There's no draw step with Necropotence. There's no new information. So he's making decisions. I mean, he should have known that, you know, a couple turns ago. And, he, and he's got to think about it when that Shattering Spree goes on stack, certainly. I'm not going to get any new info on my turn. Again, he's got to think about it when, the, when he's just carding cards like Chain of Vapor. You know, what's my strategy from here against that Shattering Spree? It was a face-up Shattering Spree, so he should really already know what his plan is following Shattering Spree. And so figuring out now, not ideal. So if Lotus Petal just makes a single, a single blue, which means... Okay. Maybe we should have kept the Sapphire over the Lotus Petal. I think this might mean that we need to lead off with Dark Ritual here. Um, and then hope it doesn't get countered. Because... Maybe we should have Mystical on their turn. Okay. Yeah, I think we're in a position where we need to lead off with Dark Ritual. Because we're, we need two black sources for the Ritual and the Duress. And we need two blue sources for this here. So. Yeah, I, I like this play. I mean, he's identifying that... Yeah, in an, ide in an ideal storm turn, you dress first. Here, we're going to ritual first. The opponent counters it. We should have a plan, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's do this. <laughs> you sit there hoping that the life doesn't go to 19. I've been here many times. You play Vintage okay. or Legacy. So this guy's Force of World. So, opponent makes a heads up cruise. play. What does that mean for us? <laughs> means that we should play Lotus Battle and pass. And they have one, two, three. They have seven mana towards this dig. We go down to one next turn, which means that we can end of turn Mystical Tutor for Yogwill. Um, and then untap, uh, recall it into our hand, and then even Jurassic if we, if we see the need to. I'm actually going to cast the Mystical Tutor now. Well, I guess the cards mm -hmm. that we care about are like Spell Pierce and Fluster Storm, so it doesn't really matter. <coughs> Well, pass the turn back. Hopefully, they don't flip a lightning bolt. So you could, I mean, you could ancestor right there. He has to draw a will plus enough mana into cast Cabal ritual. That's not that. That doesn't sound good. Um, but there was another play. So what? Ha what about right here? Maybe you know. Here, let, let, let me get it to where we need to get it. And I'll pause the video, and you can you, we can puzzle this out. So what's the, what, 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 what's another possibility here? Pause the video. Think about what you would do here in this spot. Your Dark Ritual has been countered. Um, okay, for those of you who pause the video, welcome back. For those of you who just want to talk through it, um, Storm is three. Sack, you know, tap, tap Academy for blue. Sack Lotus Petal for black. Lotus Petal puts a seventh card in our graveyard. Cabal Ritual makes five mana. We're now at Storm four. Duress our opponent. We're now at Storm 5, and the opponent's Dig Through Time, which is a pretty potent spell, is gone. We cast Tendrils. That's Tendrils for 12. It's not lethal, but do we really care? We have here Mystical Tutor in our hand. Okay, no ability to cast it, but we can now, by virtue of gaining you know 12 life, go back up to 16. We can Necro for another you know, 9, 10, whatever we, whatever we decide is a safe number. 8, 9, 10, whatever. So I think that play is just like a monstrous play where a lot has gone wrong to this point and there there's, needs to be a gear switching of stepping back. Okay, Tendrils is not just the finisher. You can also use Tendrils with Necro out. So that's a, that's a big swing of the game right there. Tendrils for 12-point drain with Necro out is actually like, and with a Duress, is actually likely to win this game. Mystical Tutor right now, not quite. Oh. 
Well, I guess the cards that we care about are like Spell Pierce and Fluster Storm, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay. And get Yogwell. Pass the turn back. Hopefully don't, they don't flip a Lightning Bolt. You know, if they have a Bolt in hand, so be it. Lotus, okay, that's gonna help them cast Dig. Now they're gonna be pretty likely to find a Bolt here. Yeah, so I think, you know, we lost this game probably when we played out our artifacts into... Oh, wow, this is a good sign. When we played out our artifacts into the Shattering Spree. If we hadn't have done that, I think we would have had um, enough... No, that's, that, that's the wrong conclusion, that playing artifacts into Shattering Spree was the difference. We, we, we identified a bunch of other plays that were actually critical, and that was actually a good Additionally, play. Additionally, last turn, we could have let off with the rest, and that would have won us the game. Okay, so the opponent's still here. So, I mean, that was just... Uh, okay, so that was, that was just straight-up poor play on our part. All right, so... Hopefully that was fun. Like I said, I'm, I'm beating up on Eric here because he is trying to get back into fighting shape. The only way to get back into the fighting shape is get back in the ring. And when you bring coaching into the mix, if you have the mindset to be coached, it's not about, hey, I'm going to, you know, I, look, I made 10 mistakes that game. That's awful. I suck. Whatever. It's like, no, I know I'm rusty. The, I, I don't have a ton of experience playing Dark Ritual decks if I'm Eric. Um, usually playing Delver. Yeah, it's going to take a little while to get those chops back. So thank you, Eric, for being a good sport and letting me use this video. I have fun with it. There's a lot of interesting plays there in a game that, you know, was punted away a few times. Fine, we all do it. You know, raise your hand if you're watching at home. You haven't punted a game in more than one way. You know, certainly my hand's not going up. So thanks again, Eric. Thanks to you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. I'm bringing you legacy, standard, modern, vintage, whatever, in-depth play. Um, more videos to come, so thanks.